and welcome to this episode of Hospitality Talks. Um, my name is Katie Moses. I'm founder and MD of Cam Media. Um, and joining me today is Coral Rose, who is MD of Country Range Group. Coral, thank you so much for joining me. Could you please just introduce yourself for anybody out there who possibly doesn't know you or, or, or understand Country Range Group? Yes. Well, hello, Katie, and thanks for the opportunity to chat today. Uh, Country Range Group are a collection of 12 family owned wholesalers across the UK and the island of Ireland. We're turning over around 500 to 600 million. Uh, well, we were last year. What we do this year could be uh, slightly different. And we serve um, all kinds of hospitality outlets and um, all the cost sector as well, um, schools, care homes and hospitals, and we serve fresh produce, uh, chilled, ambient, frozen, and non-food. So a one-stop delivery service. Brilliant, thank you very much for that succinct explanation. Um, so tell me, obviously hospitality closed down in March, but of course you, as you just said, you know, you do have the areas of schools and, 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 and the, the public sector. So what, what did you do during that time as a business and, and, and how was the industry coping during that time with those two very very different offers that, that, that you have um yeah so we all kind of suffered from that immediacy of the lockdown at the end of march and within our membership some members have 100 percent hospitality some have 70 um, percent hospitality within that they still then had to service the uh, care homes and hospitals mm -hmm. so many of them did that through april may and june at a loss others were doing boxes for the public sector uh, members also set up click and collect operations with direct to consumer. I think within two weeks, every member had some kind of click and collect operation going on just to make sure they had some trade, some way to try and move those stocks on. Mm. And then, of course, we face the next challenge. And it does seem like life is, has been uh, quite a lot of challenges, one after the other. But the next challenge was helping hospitality to reopen for July the 4th um, and, then, and then subsequently uh, schools later on in the year. So how did members approach that? I mean, w did, did they already have the stock they needed? Was there a bit of a scramble to get that? You know, how did, how did members cope with that situation? Yes, and, and you can see through July, um, businesses started to open up in July and not all independents um, were open straight away. The majority of the business that our members serve are independent hospitality rather than the branded chains. And so, of course, they were opening up slowly, maybe just at weekends at first. And so the, we had to get in the stock holding, um, chill and fresh produce, again, get that in as required. Then August came with the ETAT to help out, which was a boom for everybody. And there were massive stock shortages. And we were always talking to the customers, trying to understand and anticipate what they needed. They didn't know what was going to happen, what bookings there would be. So it's important to have a partnership approach wherever possible. And, 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 and now that we've got, well, I mean, conservative estimates are around 70% of hospitality is, is sort of now, now open and functioning in, in some way or another. What, I mean, we've, we've seen that the operators have had support from government. One of the things that I haven't seen yet is where the rest of the supply chain is getting any support. And, you know, I even include, include ourselves in that. You know, if you look at research agencies, recruitment agencies, look at people that provide services, people that provide products into hospitality. Where are we with government support for, for, for the wholesale industry? We're lobbying very hard through the Federation of Wholesale Distributors, who are the body that represent about 600 wholesalers um, across the UK, to try and create an awareness and an appreciation of the supply chain beyond hospitality. Like you said, Katie, people don't really think about all the services that go into hospitality, neither the products. People just think, oh, they're there on the shelves. How, how do they appear? And so what we've been trying to do is just raise awareness of that so that any um, support that's given to hospitality, and rightly so, hospitality need the support, but um, they received um, grants um, and, um, and uh, business rates relief, but a wholesale wasn't given any of that support. It wasn't extended to our part of the business. So again, what we're trying to get is business rates relief because that will help from a financial perspective. We had an awful lot of stock that we had to write off. Uh, there were many bills that were unpaid. And again, we were just writing off. So it's just trying to make sure that one, we have parity with what was awarded to hospitality. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, a lot of the wholesalers, well, certainly a, a lot of the um, a, a lot of wholesalers that I saw were still out there and helping people and were still donating stock that was that, that was going to spoil or that, you know, so they've contributed so much 
within this situation, but yet haven't had that support themselves, which does, you know, it seems unfair. Yeah, there worked so many. I, I, I did a um, kind of a ring around of our, our members and all of them have, um, you know, donated to food banks, um, given parcels to um, NHS workers, sorted food for emergency services, given things to schools and helping the, the food for the vulnerable. So they've all done that. You know, the last thing we want to do is throw food away completely. We want to make sure that it goes to somebody who's deserving and, and, and needy of it. But yes, didn't get any money back for that. Right. And so looking to the future then, what do you see is on the cards for the industry and specifically for food service wholesale? Gosh, that is a really difficult question. Wouldn't we all love to know that? And, you know, I, I, I do a, a check up, a check in with all the, the members each week. And um, there's some who are in tier one, some in tier two, some in tier three. There's the guys in Scotland where there's a complete shutdown. There's the guys in Ireland where, again, there's a complete lockdown. And it's a, it's a real tale of, 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 of differing stories wherever you are in, in the country because geographically the coast has been faring better than the city centres as we know you know especially from a hospitality sector and all those outlets the city centre is really really suffering so it's really important that we all work together and, and come as a, a community to uh, ensure that we communicate with supplies of stocks when needed that we understand the resources that are required and for wholesale, food service wholesale, it's really important that we keep the wheels turning because care homes uh, still require their deliveries. We need to make sure that there's been a lot of talk at the moment about free school meals for children. Well, the wholesalers are the guys that deliver the food into the schools that make sure that that's there for their, their meals. So we kind of need to, to work and, and uh, just kind of work together as an industry. I agree. And I, I think that, you know, one of the areas that we've discussed um, at, at CAM is very much about being flexible um, and understanding that whatever you put in place right now might have to change in, in, in two weeks time. Other than that flexibility is there and, and, and that community and that keeping in contact, is there anything else that we can be doing as an industry to, to, to ensure sort of survival and, and also not, not just coming out the other side of this, but coming out the other side of having learnt as much as possible um, about the situation. Is there anything else that you would advise as an industry we should be talking about? I think there's been a massive learning about digitalization and now and the importance of data and how to use technology to help our businesses. Consumers have become a lot more uh, digi savvy and whereas before people might not want to do things digitally because they've had to are more prepared to do so. And caterers as well in terms of being placing on uh, placing orders and sharing information. So I think we need to understand the learnings of that and how we can continue to invest and apply uh, the use of, of data and technology within our businesses. I think they're going to be key um, and an appreciation and understanding of the differing needs uh, of it with the customers. Customers, we appreciate it's really difficult for them because they haven't they don't know if um, through you know all the restrictions coming along are they going to have a, a busy cafe a busy pub a busy restaurant at, at the weekend and so they're placing their orders later and later with a wholesaler because they don't want to hold the stock but the wholesaler then is expected to be able to produce that stock straight away but they don't want to buy it because they don't want to be left with the stock either so i think it's just you know nobody knows what's going to happen but the more we communicate the better that's brilliant. And Coral, I think I'm going to, that is exactly where I'm going to say thank you very much for your time, because I think that communication is absolutely key at the moment. And I really appreciate you taking the time to come and communicate the thoughts um, of Country Range Group and indeed of the wholesale industry to us today. So thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Katie.